Among Us, at its core, is a game about sabotaging other players. Not only is it the name of one of the game's core mechanics, but it is also the only way for the imposters to win over the crewmates. So, I want to make a one-hour level that sort of mirrors this kind of gameplay, where the only real enemy is human nature. First things first, I tell them in a roundabout way what to do. Don't kill each other in a big sign. You think this would be human nature, but you would be surprised. In all seriousness, this is going to be a 4 player multiplayer versus level, and normally the tendency in that is to race everybody and do whatever you can to get ahead, but in this level, it's not gonna work like that. They're gonna have to work together to not accidentally kill everybody. So that is why I have the big yellow sign. And now we have to get around to, you know, making the level. I think the biggest problem that I faced was not being prepared. I had a vague idea of what I wanted this level to be about, but not a concrete plan of what it was going to be. In my head, I thought that I would have a ton of different minigames where it would be really easy to mess with everybody else, but the only way to win would be to not do that. One of these minigame ideas that I had was a key battle where everybody would fight for one key to be the first to go into a key door, but if they kept fighting and took too long to do it, then they would die. So the key would be to stop fighting for first place, but still try to get in as fast as possible. I knew that I could pull off this idea fairly quickly, so I got to work on it right away. If all else failed, at least I would have one little minigame thing. But when I started this one hour level, I knew that there would be one problem that I would have to face the entire time. How do you make something fun in four player mode and single player mode? Sometimes when designing a multiplayer level, single player gets thrown to the side, and when you play it single player, it's basically like playing no level at all, because everything you do is to focus that everyone else will be around you. So while something may be hard in multiplayer, since everybody is basically trying to stop you, in single player, it's a cakewalk. I did not want this to be the fate of my level. So with everything I did, I made sure that it was fun in single player and that it would be fun in multiplayer. How I did this is by using stuff in single player that would still expedite the fun in multiplayer. Now that sentence probably sounded like total nonsense, but here's an example. So in this room, I am putting springs up everywhere so that in single player, it's still hard to get on the platform to progress, but in multiplayer, it'll be even more hectic because not only are you trying to avoid everybody else taking the key, but you're also bouncing around everywhere. That is what I mean by keeping it fun in single player, but exponentially making it more fun in multiplayer at the same time. I made a very simple contraption that when enough time has passed, a wall is broken and thus the auto scroll starts again, and you are trapped in a room that says fail, and your only option is to die and restart the level. And with that, I got to work on the second minigame. My idea for this one was to have a big platform where it would be super easy for everybody to throw everybody else off, but at the end there would be some kind of player check so everybody would have had to survive or else there would be punishment. But I kind of ran into a few problems, you know, it would, how do I, mm, it would, it was just, it was bad. It was just really not fun. It was, it was just, it was a long ride through void and nothing else. Again, in multiplayer versus the primary mode that I want this level to be played in, it would have been fine. It would have been a stale mark in the level, but still fine, I guess. But in single player, it would have been so, so boring. Just waiting and not moving for about 30 seconds. And on top of that, at the end, I would have had to check if all the players were there, 
but it would also have had to work in single player, and I just did not want to have to deal with that in my tight one hour window. So as you can see, I was a little bit stuck. The idea was an idea and nothing more, and was not plausible with the resources I had available in terms of time. Well, I thought, if the first idea works so well, then why don't I make the level that, but again, in different forms over and over again? So yeah, the whole thing is going to be a series of key battles that aren't really key battles, because if you do battle for the key, then you're gonna run out of time and fail. So, with most of my time used up and only half an hour to finish, I had finally decided what my level was going to be. And here is the level all completed and uploaded. This is the sign at the beginning, don't kill each other. Very clear, very just spelt out right there for you. And it tells you how to play the game. It warns people how to do this and why they should, because if they don't, then they are going to fail. Now this is the first room. We've seen this before, so. This is what happens if you don't make it. That's actually a bad example. So let's redo that. And we're back. This time I will show you a good example of what happens when we die. See up at the top there is a lava bubble and a frozen coin. So once that goes to the end, the wall breaks, the muncher falls down, and our only option is to go into these spikes and try again. So this time, let's do it correctly and move ahead. So the way you get past this room is by landing on the springs. So this is hard in single player, but it's even harder in multiplayer when everybody's trying to take the key also. Now this is the second room, and it's really tempting for somebody hit to hit this, but then it makes it basically 100 times harder, because now you have to deal with the blocks phasing in and out. And if we fail, again we are taken to this area, and we have to restart. Bummer. Ugh, I almost didn't make that one. Okay, but yeah. When somebody presses this, it starts the on-off thing, and thus it makes it a lot harder. So the key is to not be tempted by it, think things through, and not make it harder for everybody else, or you will die. And that is not ideal. Okay, so this time let's ignore the on-off blocks and do this normally. So, oh wait, no, I need the, I need the key. Okay. So yeah, along with all of that going on, people are still definitely gonna be trying to steal the key from other people. It's bound to happen. The file kinda corrupted while recording the last room, and this was the only way that seemed okay to show it, so. Okay, that is the whole level. It is pretty good, I think, for one hour. I mean, there were a lot of things that would definitely be terrible to deal with in multiplayer versus, so I think I did my job well done. 